he was the guy who was keeping Team Liquid in this game, but now he's the guy who's putting him in the wrong spot until Medios is overextended. The stop oh! will turn the tide of the fight. 100 Thieves will knock them down. They'll claim the turrets, they'll claim the Nexus, and they are close to playoff position. Welcome everyone to Inside Esports. I'm Matt Hempstead and this past weekend was week 8 of the LCS. Playoffs are approaching quickly and every game matters. So before we call it Mad Magical to talk about the fallout of week 8, let's take a look at some highlights. Impact. Trying to find some damage there. Don't put going in. Looking to start the fight off over the Team Liquid Big Boy. And they've got him already. Jensen's in some trouble and Smith, he's already dead. And that was Trigger pull! Impact once again getting himself caught out. He was the guy who was keeping Team Liquid in this game, but now he's the guy who's putting him in the wrong spot until Medios is overextended. The stop oh! will turn the tide of the fight. Arrow is down. The Nexus turrets are falling. Dopla goes next. And Impact says revive. I don't need no revive. Team Liquid, take down Optic Gaming. And oh, thank God, you gotta be careful. Flashes in, finds the play, but not yet the kill. Ryu finally answers, and it's Broken Blight, a double kill for Corky. It's a trade of ult, that's good for Fake God, gets some decent damage across, kind of another stun pretty clean right here. Broken Blade gets the heal, does not find the knockup though, they find all the stuns. And here comes the rest of the squad though, as TP's gonna be under the turret. Look at the timing, Bjergsen's on TF under the turret, and he will die. They're gonna go for the play right now. Both of cast, only Bjergsen separate the team. Fight. Fake God gets pulled in, pops a stopwatch, but it's Bjergsen is dropping, immediately dead. 5v4, the chase now continues, Amazing wants to find a slow. They're gonna get the kill on the smoothie. 100 Thieves will knock them down, they'll claim the turrets, they'll claim the Nexus, and they are close to playoff position. The mid lane with Sven hovering just off on the right. This will be the first counter if Smithy could participate in. Is it going to be fast enough? And he doesn't really hit the flag and drag. And here comes the final chapter across the team with TL. They're going to look to trade this one back. Very low health bars as they get themselves back into the fight. That's going to be Sven Scarin going down first. Double it picks himself up another kill as they lose impact. A one for one what? as they continue to trade. The prowling projectile keeps in range and that's the double kill. 20 seconds left on the slicing maelstrom from Kenanix. Smithy goes in. It's a go for broke moment for TL. Double is trying to get himself in the back line. TL could cleanse first with this victory, but C9 says not today. Core JJ Grey health and his health says bye bye. C9 takes down Team Liquid. To help us recap the second last week of the LCS Summer Split regular season, I'd like to welcome Matt Magical to the show. How's it going, man? I'm doing great. How about yourself, Matt? Not too bad. I mean, we, there's a lot to talk about because, you know, the playoffs mm -hmm. are coming quick, and uh, Cloud9 specifically had a very interesting Week 8. They took down Team Liquid in their second game of the week. Uh, you know, their six-game winning streak started with a loss to C9 and then ends the exact same way. So what makes Cloud9 such a, a good matchup against Team Liquid? So when I look at how Team Liquid like to play, they like to play a little bit more slow. They try to get things more like Azir. You look at how they lost into Cloud9. They had the Sona Tom Kench bot lane, something that wants to scale more into the game. That doesn't do well into Cloud9. Cloud9 are a very explosive team. They want to be able to try to get advantages early on. They always try to be proactive around someone like Sun Scarin or even Blabber, where they can then impact their side lane so they can get bot lane ahead, whether it's Sneaky or Deathly, or go top lane in to Licorice or Kumo, they always play that style. And for Team Liquid, because they want to be able to scale up, they never get that chance. They never can hit the late game when they are going to be able to just win out purely based off their macro. Now, you mentioned a bunch of uh, substitutes there as well. And I mean, against FlyQuest, we saw another guy who hasn't played for Cloud9 yet, definitely coming into place, uh, replace Sneaky. And Sneaky's been under a lot of criticism in the past, especially this split for like some mm -hmm. of his laning performances, some not so great numbers. So is this the time, do you think, to be playing with a sub when they're still fighting for a first round buy against CLG? Because it cost them a, a win against FlyQuest. I don't know if I'd go as far as say it cost them because for Cloud9, how they really have always been wanting to play since franchising has been around a 10-man roster. This is just how I see it, where they've yeah. constantly been wanting to bring in these subs. They want to be able to rely on new strategies that come with having someone different, such as Deathly. So for me, I don't look at it as I'm like, going like, oh, this is just an experimental thing going into the final stretches of the season. They truly have faith in how Deathly can perform. 
and they also have faith in Sneaky. They know Sneaky very well and how he is a very clutch AD carry, especially when it comes to these high-pressure games like you have when they faced off against Team Liquid. So, I mean, they just got definitely very recently in that trade with the Golden Guardians. So do you think it was too soon for them to actually put them into the lineup? Or are they just really trying to test it if it can work with a 10-man? Or is there more going on with potentially, you know, sneaky underperforming? So they're just trying to see if definitely can be plug and played right now and then. I feel like it was a little bit too early. They wanted to be able to have the strategy, and they felt like going up against FlyQuest was the best team to try that out against, since FlyQuest at this point has already been eliminated from playoffs, so they thought in their minds this is the best opportunity that we're going to have. Right. But maybe they needed to wait a little bit longer. They needed to be able to test the waters more in Academy or in scrims themselves to be able to find out whether or not this is gonna work for that 10-man roster. I don't feel like this is, oh, sneaky underperforming, we have to get him out. I feel like it's much more of that, uh, them just w thinking that it's working in scrims after a couple of results instead of going for the uh, longer stretch of it and saying, we need more results. We need to see how things are continuing with Deathly. Right. Uh, on the other side of that trade, the Golden Guardians uh, are looking pretty solid. I mean, they just went 2-0, but before that, they had lost three of their last four. So as of right now, how dangerous do you think this team is now? They look pretty comfortable with FBI and who he done in that bot lane. Golden Guardians are a team that I have been looking at for a while as always this team that's going to make the playoffs. They were this perfect number four seed going into spring. I felt like it slotted perfectly after Cloud9, Team Liquid, and TSM. Now it's a little bit more of a shakeup. I feel like Golden Guardians are finally starting to hit their stride, especially because I mentioned before how Team Liquid like to play a later uh, stretch of the game. Most of North America like to play that. Only Cloud9 are really that exception. Golden Guardians just fits perfectly for with how Froggen has historically liked to play. He loves to play things like Karthus that we saw really recently. Velkaz has been one of his go-tos. Anivia, of course, is something that he'll always be able to fall back onto. So FBI and Huhi have slotted into there where Huhi has this experience from a mid lane perspective on what Froggen's going to need and can facilitate that from the support of Roland. FBI, I've been just impressed with. He's been doing an amazing job after slotting in after Death League. I think some of the biggest thing that was kind of surprising to me is TSM is is pretty slumping pretty hard right now. I mean, yes, they beat Echo Fox, but then they got completely rolled by 100 Thieves in the, in the following game. So why do you think we're seeing such a wide array of results from TSM, especially as we come to a close of the, the summer split? I mean, when we looked at how TSM was, they have Grig and they have Acadian. They were trying to play both junglers for a while. They really wanted to be able to swap them back and forth, but now they've made the hard commitment. Let's go with Acadian and see how he's going to be able to do. But Acadian is much more of a carry type jungler. Right. He hasn't been really as proficient on the tanks. You look at his stats and how he's been performing this split. has been all right. He's been playing a lot of Sejuani, which is something that he was going to in the past anyways. But when he had his big standout moments. It was always on things like Rek'Sai, where he was making a name. The Gragas, which he's gotten to play a couple more times here, have been looking nice, but he needs to be able to get back onto those roles, and I feel like that has been why they've been having their issues, is Acadian hasn't been as comfortable in that jungling spot, and since he's a newer jungler, someone still learning a lot from veterans such as Sven Skarin, he's not going to be able to transition well from carry to tank. Right. I mean, he also went up against Amazing, who has uh, quite a bit of veteran uh, experience behind him. And for 100 Thieves, you know, they completely stomped TSM, and now they're only one game back from a playoff spot after their absolutely horrendous start. So how has 100 Thieves been able to come together so smoothly, even though this isn't even the roster that started the split? I mean, they've only been <laughs> together for a few weeks now. It's really interesting to look at 100 Thieves with how they've been able to come back into the split. And a lot of that has to do with how Bang has been performing in the bot lane. Yeah. He has been an absolute monster as an AD carry where he has been putting everyone to shame, including the likes of Doublelift on his performances. And this is pretty much Bang activated. He is looking great. Ryu in the mid lane is a consistent rock for the team where he's able to uh, roam and try to see if they can get some impact going in the side lanes. And you mentioned Amazing as well, having a good amount of veteran experience as well, being able to control the jungle so that way they can eventually have Bang be the one who's carrying them into the later stages of the game. Yeah, I mean, Bang and Afro look amazing in the bot lane, and it's starting to look like a win lane, win game thing for 100 Thieves. <laughs> and as I said, they're only one game back of Optic and Golden Guardians, so do you think they have what it takes to sneak into the playoffs? They're going up against Clutch and CLG next week, which is, uh, you know, a hit and miss schedule for them. 
For me, I don't even feel like it's sneaking into the playoffs for them. I feel like they deserve to be in the playoffs at this yes. rate with how they've been performing. They've been doing such a great job while the likes of Optic have been all right. They've been that hit or miss team where it almost feels like they're about to barely sneak into playoffs themselves, even though they've been the ones holding on for the longest amount of time. While you have a team like TSM that I'm more looking out for than any with how they might fall apart and they might not make it into playoffs. Sure, they have a pretty easy schedule going into the final week against FlyQuest. The final final game against Team Liquid could mean that if they have a fluke situation like Cloud9 did where they lost to FlyQuest, there's a good likelihood we see a playoff without TSM. That would be a lot of salty TSM fans, which honestly I'm okay with. I'm not sure what your take on the TSM <laughs> fans is. Well, Cloud9 person here, so. There you go. Well, then we're both kind of rooting for TSM to maybe sneak out of that, that playoff spot. <laughs> uh, Matt Magical, thanks so much for joining us to break down Week 8, man. Enjoy the rest of the split, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day.